Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Okay, first of all, before I start this, there is a piece of 90s, um, there is a, there's a clue about how old I am and, and something that any of you that grew up in the 90s will recognize in this screenshot. And so if you see it, say it. <laughs> I want you to say what it is. I want to know how many of you guys are observant and can use your magnocellular and peripheral while you're listening to me. And also it's funny. So I just want you to, <laughs> to do that. Um, so put it in the chat below and I'll know who listened and I'll know how old you are too, if you notice. So I want to talk about parents. Man, this is the thing that I hear from so many of you is I want to work with these kids and I don't want to work with their parents <laughs> or their parents working with their parents is the hardest part about working with kids kids period and then kids with behavioral learning and socialization challenges for sure and here just really quickly i want to give you a few tips on this that'll make your life so much easier will make you so much happier will decrease your frustration and improve your retention and improve the ease of communication and rapport that you have with parents and families and will not be because I, I see it i see people wanting to get out of working with peds and particularly ndds because of the parents here's what you have to remember so here's like three things and but just really simply here's what you have to remember you have to remember what these parents have gone through and are going through and that their life is challenging and that everywhere they go their kids are looked at as the bad kids or the kids that aren't working hard enough or the lazy kids or the troublemakers or the kid that hurts other kids or can't stay regulated or it's disruptive in the class um, or is so shy that they can't engage um, or has severe anxiety and will not engage. They're looked at as, as their deficits. Their kids are defined by their deficits. And they're really, no matter what people say, you go to the doctor's office and your kid can't sit still in the lobby, even though they're there because they're looking for help with their attentiveness and hyperactivity, yet they're supposed to sit in the lobby, sit still for 45 minutes while the doctor's you know, running late and have appropriate behavior. And if they don't, then the staff gets irritated with them and the parents are getting nervous and their kid, the kid's behavior and deflections are escalating and elevating because it's a stressful scenario. And then the parents are looked at as the bad parents and the parents who aren't disciplining enough or our helicopter parents or you know, it's their fault or if they would just do this technique or do it this way, then they'd be different. This is what these parents are living most of the time. And a lot of them, by the time they end in your office, although you focus system and certified doctors, you're changing the game in this because you're leading this in your community and leading with brain development to be a, a more initial resource for these families. But in reality, right now, as it is, most of these families have been through a lot of different things before they come to you. A lot of them have tried different things. A lot of them are exhausted. They're financially tapped, you know, they're, they're, they're confused. They're used to being looked at as like, they're the problem. They're questioning, am I the problem? You know, they're living in a state of chaos and stress and nobody's helping. And then they come to you. Here's a few things. One, you need to recognize that this is the reality for most of them. We have to recognize how to not just, you know, understand the clinical pieces and have the appropriate clinical exam for their kids and clinical tools and all that stuff, which we teach you in the series in the system. But we, this is why in the system and in the series, we teach a big part about creating a safe place for the families and specific procedures on improving communication with parents in chronic stress and creating an environment and procedures that are congruent with working with parents and children in chronic stress and what that looks like. And you need to recognize that a, a parent in chronic stress is living in a state of most likely decision fatigue. So if we give them a whole bunch of options, even though we think that's the best thing to do, oh, I want to give them a ton of options. 
um, it's actually not the best thing to do. We should give them, just like the kids, we should give them not five options. Oh, we're so great here. We have so many payment plans for you. Um, we have five payment plans. Or you could do this one, and then you could change it like this. And you know what? You can come in when you want to come in because we want to make it easy for you. No. A brain and chronic stress living in decision fatigue needs a little more concrete choice, still choice, still control, but maybe two, right? Maybe two choices, maybe one, maybe one choice with two options, maybe three, start there. So this is a really common mistake. So start there and then you can always expand if need be. But remember, decision fatigue, don't make them make a ton of decisions. Also remember that you're teaching them something new and it has nothing to do with their intellect or what they bring to the table or what profession they are. Um, but a brain in chronic stress is not able to efficiently learn as well as a brain that's not in chronic stress. So nothing to do with intellect, more to do with the fact that they're living more in that amygdala, in that emotional, fight or flight, you know, decision fatigue, it's their kid, they're fearful, they've lived this way for a long time, they're used to being judged, and you're trying to give them like way too much information. This is one of the massive challenges, this is number two, this is one of the massive challenges that doctors make. And they think, oh my gosh, I have all of this complex information. I have all this deep nutritional information to give them. I have all this deep information about primitive reflexes. I have this deep information. I'm gonna teach them everything there is to know about subluxation and objective indicators and thermography and heart rate variability. I'm gonna teach them everything there is to know because I'm gonna impress them. I'm gonna get them, I'm gonna teach them and they're gonna think it's amazing. And in reality, you're turning them away from what you're doing because it's too much information. This is why we teach to find the simple system, the simple communication pegs. Sort through the complexity. You can dip into the complexity. Ask. You can answer the questions. You can meet them where they are if they want that. But really start with the simplicity, the communication pegs of, of meeting them where they are, what their primary concern is, being able to back it up, give the 30,000 foot view of why what does that tell us about the brain? What does that hyperactivity tell us about the brain? What do we know about brain development? What do we know about subluxation, alterations of movement patterns and neurological function and what that does to brain development and how that might be an, a, a piece of the puzzle for why their child is having challenges engaging and connecting with their world. See, we meet them where they are, we simply communicate, we zoom out a little bit with simple communication and we continue to drip communication pegs specifically and simply throughout our relationship with them. Because here's the third thing that's gonna happen. They're gonna forget what you say. They're living in stress. They're living in stress. They're gonna forget what you said in the beginning. And so you're going to need to use and have communication pegs that you use throughout care, or you will see a massive drop off in retention. You will see a massive drop off and they forget why they're here, particularly if their kid is still having hyperactive behavior and you haven't simply reorganized their expectations based on what you found on the clinical exam, which is what we teach you in the focus system, to then say, I understand that your primary concern is hyperactivity. I'm with you there, I wanna see Johnny improve in that. Based on this exam and what we know about brain development and the nervous system, we know that the first things we're gonna see and we're gonna look for are changes on these clinical findings and you know Johnny's ability to have better spatial awareness, have an improvement in the way he moves his body in space. I'm gonna be really excited when I see that Johnny wants to climb on the playground at school at recess because he's having more confidence in moving his body through space. That's gonna be a win. I'm gonna be really excited, mom, when I see that Johnny wants to connect with you and can make eye contact with you and ask to do something with you or with his sisters. And he's even if he does it in an awkward way, he's starting to engage and try to have this awareness and connection outside of self. These are some of the things that we're looking for first. And we teach you how to know how to define those things and what specifically to look for. But we have to, we have to be able to understand and take the appropriate clinical exam and meet them where they are with their primary concern and not like poo poo the diagnosis or their concern that they're having at the same time communicate that we're not treating that diagnosis or symptom 
but we're looking at underlying function and there's a reason for that engagement, connection, and learning challenge. And then specifically give them something else to look for and then have specific communication as, the, as we continue to work with them that we're continually giving them simple communication pegs, pegs, not scripts, pegs, we talk about this, um, so that you can keep educating them and helping these parents have self-discovery on what you do, why you do it, and how it's impacting their child's brain and their child's expression of life. Not just in the first three visits or the first two visits, not just at the re-exam, not just at the anniversary exam, not just if you need to add in another clinical tool, but all along the way. Self-discovery, they're living in chronic stress. We cannot expect them to learn efficiently, make a lots of decisions, and retain information. The same as the kids who are having troubles with learning. We have to understand where these parents are coming from and how to work with them. Or what happens is we start to get, you know, the parents start not bringing their kid to the appointments. They start, you know, having big questions and objections. They start getting frustrated. And the thing is, is what happens is the doctors then start saying, oh, it's the parents. These parents are the problem. And we have all this frustration about the parents. In reality, we have to do better with understanding where these parents are and how we need to communicate to them and how we need to work with them in addition to their kids, which we help you do extremely simply by understanding how to communicate and create a safe place for a family in stress. This is also why we have a parent panel and we have, do uh, we have I don't call her doctor, she should have a doc, she, she should have that title, but Amy uh, Yardley, who is the uh, owner of Navigate Your Healing, which is all for uh, helping support parents of kids with uh, neurodeflective disorders of various types and navigating the stress of that life and helping them as a family and as individuals have a better expression of life. So she will be, she's at our, always at our live um, event, which we have coming up June 18th and 19th. Um, if any of you are out there and you're going, I need to, I'm still wanting to do this. I want to serve these parents and in these families and these kids in, in our community, but it's too complex or it's intimidating or whatever. Listen, we have yesterday, we had 10, I think we still, we have nine, something like that seats left in our certification series where you learn the focus system, you get a system, uh, focus system implementation guide, you get your instant access to your learning modules that you need to watch before the live event, which is June 18th and 19th, and it's offered virtual or in-person in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So you still have time to do that. We still have some seats left. If you have questions, PM me or the Focus Academy. And um, remember, we are here to help as many people as possible who are struggling with deflected development because of the increased stress in their lives, which is pretty much everybody in your community right now. And so my thing is, if you're working with people, you better know this stuff. You better know how to lead with the brain or you're going to be left behind. Okay, uh, be well, do good work.